recent weeks. And towards the end, we saw how the Ospreys uh, scrum was really beginning to tell in terms of its pressure on the Dragons. And you can tell us a bit more about that, Sean Holly. The scrum is always going to be an issue in this game, particularly after last week and with the referee. But on the Dragons ball, they have a strategy. They want to really chase the hit, get there with Nathan Buck, chase his feet and get it to Toby Falato quickly so they can get it away. But they have no answer to the technique, the power of the Ospreys pack. Inevitably a yellow card, and then when the next guy comes on, Nigel Owens has no issue but to go into the sticks. He's been far more decisive than last week's referee. His engagement process is a little long, however, he is making decisions. Thanks very much indeed for that, Sean. Well, there's no shortage. Here's Bigger again. Oh, he's just got his left arm. Over his thigh, gently caressing his thigh, I'd suggest. Nothing more than that. And down goes Alan Brew. He is a winger. Sean, you've seen something as well. Yeah, Charlo, I said Brew would be up for the game. He's been a real new since the first half, chopping away at Reese Webb. You can see now in this instance, he's blocking Adam Jones, stopping him, cleaning out the rut. He's been a real new since. And of course, he chops Hanno Dirksen down in a try saving tackle. Finally, does his job, gets him down to 14 men. And it grew. That's the way lost! Um, both sides wanting to play, both sides looking to get the ball wide. Um, we've seen a lot of skill, some great lines, as uh, Jonathan has pointed out. But defensively as well, both sides are very, very aggressive. But ultimately, I think it's the Ospreys' defence that is uh, winning the game for them. It started slightly ominously for the Ospreys. Munster scored that early try, and Sean Holly's been having a look at that one in the truck. Sean? Yeah, an awesome first half display from a defensive point of view, but they were a little bit lax early on, and Munster took really uh, an advantage of this uh, at the start of the game. Now, we've, we've highlighted first break from Keith Earls, a great unders line with Ashley Beck is a little bit out of sync, but they should have two contingency here. The next is Khan Portali. Only one tackle a game he needs to make, and then the back three don't communicate enough. They should be talking to each other to push Keithley out to a tackle. It doesn't happen. Just a lapse there in the first half early on, but since then, they really showed up their defence. It's a defensive lap lapse from the Ospreys, but some could not rush out to the line because they will just pick you to pieces and the way the Austin have played tonight, I think they've been brilliant. Sean, what have you seen? Just another guy, Charlo, who's gone really well tonight and uh, one that should be on the plane to Australia this summer is Ashley Beck. He's playing with a lot of confidence. We've had this guy since he was 14 and he's really come through this season. A big ball carry, showing great strength getting across the game line, negating anything that Munster would try to do to hold him up. You know, he's looked dangerous. You know, he's looked to offload. He's been the Pro 12's biggest offloader this season, and this creates the try here by the persistence of him, the strength, and the ability to offload. Ashley Beck, great stuff. Well, yeah. we discussed this earlier on, we were yeah. uh, Over that one, on Mike Cherry, and the appreciation of the teamwork involved between Timberick and Alan Wynne Jones. Sean, back to you. Yeah, well, this performance has been built on defence, typified by Paul James, a stalwart, technically fantastic in the tackle. He's put his body on the line, he's made good low tackles, he's really been inspirational tonight in what is likely to be his last performance at the Liberty Stadium. A true Osprey. Both here uh, do a real proud performance. Thank you very much. Yeah, huge congratulations to Steve Tandy there. Let's bring Sean Holly in on this and uh, a pick of tries to look at, Sean, but uh, the Hanno Dirksen one was pretty special and it all began with some immense defensive work from Justin Tiffich. It takes a long time to build a defensive system, Ross, but tonight the boys have brought appetite, organisation and, more importantly, execution. Four of the five tries tonight came from turnovers from defensive situations. Typified here by Justin Tiffich. Great low tackle. Look at the appetite of the Osprey players to get in and turn this over. And for me, you know, I agree with Jonathan. Tonight, in my nine years' involvement, this is the best that I've seen the Ospreys finish off tries. They've shown great confidence, ability, and again, appetite to go and score over the line. Richard Fuss has gone well tonight. This is a mismatch, but Hannah Dirks is really showing his colours now. He knows where the line is. He's got a great finish, and that typifies what the Ospreys are about at the moment. The coaching team, team are doing great, and in this form and in this confidence, surely they can beat anyone now. Thanks very much indeed, Sean. Well, Rob, you're right. So, how do you think France are going to approach this game against Wales? 
Well, I don't think they've gelled yet under Philippe Saint Andre, and I think that is reflected in their selection at the moment, nine and ten today. You know, I think the best player in France for me, and has some experience of it with Jonathan, is is Yashvili, and he's not in the squad, so. Um, but the selection will be key, but I think they'll try and come through our blitz. They're big ball carriers, people like Fofana and Rougerie, and they'll come a bit closer with pick and But as I said earlier, for me, since Dave Ellis has left as defence coach, uh, they, they're not as organised in defence, and uh, there are some holes there for Wales to exploit. So, um, yeah, you know, if they pick Yashvili or Para, we've got to worry, but um, you know, I think we've just got too much for them. And Wales, we've got a team that's really gelled. How are the boys going to look after each other this week? They want to be part of this. There'll be a lot of competition. And um, so it'll be, uh, I'm sure, it'll be a very tough week for us. Thanks, Jonathan. Now, Sean, should we be worried about how well Italy contained Wales yesterday? No, not really. I think we've got too many threats around the park. You know, I think we were up against a very well organised, well marshaled defence. Italy had yesterday, and funny enough, I don't think France are as well organised. And for me, you know, as a coach, uh, it was very clear that their tacklers were very good, they were very low and effective and uh, the next arriving guy, the plus one as I would, would call him, was very effective and selective in slowing Wales down so we had very little slow ball to play with. When we did on things like a tap penalty we could see the dividends that we got. Now we've heard that Wolves is going to be training again this week but um, if he can't play in the match then Tipperick is somebody you know well because you coached him just played. Well he was my man of the match yesterday, I thought he was outstanding, um, you know he has great skills, deft touches and he's great on the ball and uh, his feet are, are excellent. And funny enough, he is very good over the ball as well, and that's something from the French games that I think they're vulnerable there. And he's a different player to Sam. He's not as physical, but he's a complete footballer, and uh, you know he's a great link. You know we certainly won't be uh, be, be losing out there if, if just in place. Thanks a lot, guys. Back to you, Jason. Well, let's round up the rest of the. Nice going to Paris when it's the other way around, and we've got the French crowd behind them. So we. Well, sure, we can finally talk about some matters on the pitch now. It's a massive task for the Blues. They've only won five times in 20 attempts against Leinster. It is, you know, the current European champs. I saw the final last year. They are worthy champions. It's a very difficult place to go in Dublin. And not helped by the Ospreys having a great win out there a couple of weeks ago. So it's a big ask. Um, but having said that, Welsh teams seem to do well as underdogs. And um, they're going to the Aviva Stadium. Is that a good thing for, for the Blues? Well, yeah, I think it is. It's a, it's a big occasion. It's a one-off. And, and, and they've got very little to lose. However, you know, on the flip side of that, things clearly aren't all, all well behind the scenes. There's some player issues. There are players leaving. Key injuries to people like Sam Walton and Jamie Roberts, who are, I'm sure the Leinster would have feared on their day. But they're not there. They're not playing. And of course, the other off the field issues. But for me, you know, um, the Blues haven't functioned of late. I think there's uh, there's some problems with their game. Their set piece isn't functioning. And, and for all the effort and, and the ability around the field of people like Scott Andrews and Sam Hobbs, you know, the scrum hasn't gone well. And uh, that'll be somewhere they need to get some parity if they had to get anything out of the game. And Scotland's had to breathe another tough ask. It is a tough ask, but you know, this isn't a top French side. Breathe only won seven games in the top 14 all year, and they've lost three of their last six at home. So. I see Scarlets having a big chance here, and uh, they've got six Grand Slammers in their midst, five others or more that, that, have, that have been in the Welsh wider squad, as well as the form player Ben Morgan. So they should go there with a lot of confidence. And, and for me, and I'm sure the Scarlet supporters, you know, there's been a lot of talk about this team now, but uh, it's all about silverware for the Scarlets now. They haven't won any silverware since the 2003 4 season, and I think it's about time that we saw some coming home. Your first appearance on Sport Wales, I hope you've enjoyed it, but are you enjoying life away from the Ospreys? I am, I have known much different for the last 10, 15 years, but uh, I am re really enjoying being with the family, doing some, some gardening and some fishing, and uh, clearly enjoying uh, the media stuff, Jason, thanks to people like your good self. It's been a great pleasure having you, thank you Sean. Thanks, That's it from us for this week, enjoy your... Starting this weekend, really got to put a performance in to really put my hand up again. Sean Lieber, uh, you know very well. Good to hear that he's got British and Irish Lions ambitions for next year. Yeah, I think he's probably got some unfinished business there. I think uh, he's, he's made the move. You know, he's played 14 games out there for Clermont now and they, they've reached the latter stages of the Heineken Cup and they'll be challenging in the top 14. So he's going to get some good quality games. And I'm glad he's got some ambition for that because uh, he's a fine player when he's on a roll. And uh, as I say, he's got some unfinished business from the last tour. And Lee's story, Sean, is so similar to a lot of the boys who have moved to France. They've gone there, they've been very honest, they've gone there for the money. You can't blame them, can you?
ever be able to compete with those French clubs? No, there's not. No, the, the differential, the budget is huge, and that's reflected in the Heineken Cup when it, when it comes to that. And if any, any Welsh teams get to the quarterfinal, semi final, final of those, those uh, competitions, they're doing very, very well, and against the Irish teams. But, um, but no, it, there are difficult times out there, and um, you know, they have to manage themselves. But I think the World Cup and the Six Nations have shown that there's, there's a lot of young talent coming through now. Maybe our development systems are starting to work. And, you know, if we can give these young players a chance, a chance to flourish, play in the big games, you know, we can see what we can produce. So, um, you know, there's, 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 there's good times ahead as long as the regions can trust in what they've got. OK, we'll look ahead to the big European games in just a moment. First